Hi, I'm Steve Teresi, and today we have two very exciting product announcements to bring to you. Now, what I'm really excited about is that these two products are also the beginning of an all-new product category for JL Audio. This category is one that's become essential for many in our industry and really for all audio professionals who are dedicated to getting the most from today's powerful DSPs. So about 25 years ago, the automotive repair industry underwent a major transformation as new vehicles began to incorporate digital technologies. Well, today, professional automotive shops continually invest in the latest tools, data, and training they need so they can work on modern vehicles with greater efficiency. Now, this efficiency is not just about speed, it's about doing the work correctly and reliably. And at the end of the day, no competent automotive technician would ever approach working on a newer vehicle without the proper knowledge and the appropriate diagnostic tools. Well, the audio industry has been transitioning from simple analog processing to more sophisticated DSP-based systems. These systems pack in more features and capability, which in turn places more demand on our knowledge and exposes the need for better tools to realize their benefits. And remember, the systems being factory installed in today's cars are also using sophisticated DSP, which we will need to measure and analyze if we want to properly upgrade these systems and get good results. There are many audio shops that have already made the jump to DSP with enthusiasm. They've received the training and have invested in computers, software, and measurement equipment. Other shops are just starting to dip their toes in the water. They're not really sure if there's a good business case for fully embracing DSP, and they're oftentimes frustrated at the time it takes to tune these DSP systems. And there's still a handful of people out there that are quietly hoping that all this will go away, which of course, it won't. DSP promises to make our audio systems better, and it certainly can, but expertise and the right tools are needed to get us there, and it all starts and ends with precise and accurate measurements. So as you probably guessed, the new products we're launching are the audio measurement tools. The first one is a major update to our Tune software called Tune 4, and it'll be available for both Windows and Mac operating systems. Along with a whole slew of interface improvements that make Tune 4 even more user-friendly for tuning JL Audio DSP products, there's a major new feature. It's located in a new tab on the main interface, and it's labeled Measure. This tab can be accessed from within a Tune project file while tuning a JL Audio DSP, or independently in measure-only mode, so you can tune any system from any manufacturer. By connecting your own measurement microphone via USB to your computer, you'll be able to use Tune 4's powerful single FFT measurement functions, real-time analyzer, and spectrograph. Now, when we look at an RTA, sometimes we want to get a big picture with less clutter, and sometimes we really want to see into the details of a frequency response measurement. So we offer resolution from one octave all the way up to 1 48th octave with line or bar displays. You can also capture RTA measurements for later viewing, and these captures include all of the measured data. So you can adjust the resolution and the scale, displaying it correctly within the captured file. Tune 4 includes a powerful signal generator. It can produce pink noise, white noise, sine waves, and square waves. It also plays wave files, so you can add additional measurement signals store them, and recall them as needed. Tune 4 also includes a powerful targets mode. You'll find a default target curve already loaded in, or you can load other pre-made targets. If you prefer to make your own target, you actually have the ability to define up to eight targets and you can have them summed together. This allows you to define band-specific targets and visualize their interaction as they combine to a sum target. You then apply equalization to the sum target and Tune 4 will apply all those changes to the impacted bands. And if that wasn't cool enough, when you're tuning with a JL Audio MVI or VXI system, you could see your EQ controls overlaid over the frequency response measurement for easy adjustment and immediate visual feedback. In addition to the EQ controls, you also have access to the other DSP controls, including crossovers, delay, polarity, and all pass filters, and levels, all from the same screen. You can also mute individual channels from the same screen, which is incredibly helpful when you're tuning your system. Undocking the panel allows you to position them where you want on the screen. The ability to run your measurements and your tuning using the same software has lots of advantages, especially when you tune on a laptop. Seeing your measurements and your controls in one software interface makes the job a whole lot easier. And it's even more convenient to let the software do some of the work for you. So we've created a very useful micro automation that shaves lots of time from the tuning process. With Tune 4 connected to an MVI or VXI system, you can use a function called Auto Set EQ to Target. 
As the name implies, you simply click a button on the EQ panel and the software adjusts the parametric EQ automatically to fit your selected target curve. It's amazingly accurate. It's performing thousands of calculations to arrive at the best combination of center frequency, Q, and gain for all 10 PEQ bands. And it does all that in seconds, which saves huge chunks of time and effort in the tuning process. As you can see, Tune has taken quite a major leap forward in version 4, and all the features we've just described here included in the software remains free to download and use. And we think that's a pretty amazing deal. And yes, we said free in case you missed that. But there's much more to our story, or as Steve Jobs used to say, there's one more thing. Tune 4 is even more amazing when it's partnered with the product you're about to see next. JL Audio has been working on this project for over three years, and we are incredibly proud to introduce a true breakthrough in audio measurement systems. One that will maximize the accuracy and efficiency of tuning DSP-based systems, and will also be a powerful tool for OEM integration and troubleshooting. Now, if we really want to be efficient when tuning DSP systems, we need an audio measurement system that hits three major marks. It must be easy to set up and operate in a real shop environment. It needs to be accurate at measuring all three dimensions of audio, level, frequency, and time. It must help us be fast at getting useful measurements to help us make correct adjustments to our audio systems. The goal is to quickly get to the point where we are listening to great audio without endless tuning sessions that don't yield the same result twice. The first time you listen to the system, it should already sound good, only requiring minor tweaking by ear. This means that we can stop setting DSPs by ear, we can stop setting DSPs using low resolution measurements or indirect observations of time-related issues, and we can eliminate guesswork and so-called rules of thumb from our processes. We need to demystify the whole thing and perform the right measurements that lead to the right settings for maximum performance. To address these needs, we have developed and are very proud to introduce the JL Audio Max audio measurement system. Max is a complete and highly sophisticated dual FFT measurement platform. The system consists of specialized hardware that connects with JL Audio's Tune 4 software on your PC or Mac. The Max hardware interface receives signals from up to five included microphones and several other analog and digital inputs. The entire system from the five mics to the Max hardware interface to the software on your computer sets up in a flash and works together seamlessly. It also packs away neatly in a waterproof case with all its included accessories so you can easily travel with it. The Max and Tune 4 measurement system is engineered to be flexible and very capable. Let's take a tour of its feature set. Max and Tune 4 are designed to work together and that is a big part of the magic. The marriage of the measurement interface and the software means that the whole system works properly by default, minimizing setup time, confusion, and troubleshooting. Secondly, the Max hardware interface is designed and built to very high standards of quality and precision. Its measurement results overlay precisely with professional audio test equipment costing upwards of five figures. It's also designed physically to meet the demands of a busy shop environment with a rugged aluminum case and rubberized end caps. It certainly isn't a toy, but rather a serious professional tool. Max is the real deal in every way. The Max hardware interface accepts low level or high level electrical audio signals up to 80 volts peak allowing you to analyze the output of very powerful amplifiers. An optical audio input is also included. These inputs make Max a very powerful tool for OEM integration, troubleshooting, and general audio measurements. We've also included an onboard DAC with low-level stereo RCA outputs, an optical digital output, and a headphone output. A convenient dual-port USB hub is on board to simplify the connection of Max to your computer and to any devices being controlled from it. Now let's talk about the multi-mic advantage. Most audio measurement setups rely on a single microphone input. These single mic measurements are okay under certain conditions, but they can lead to incorrect conclusions as they do not mimic how a human hearing system perceives sound in a space. Because accurate and efficient measurement is a core goal for Max, it is designed as a multi-microphone system right out of the box. The five included measurement microphones can be used in several ways depending on what you need to measure. 
We include a five microphone mounting fixture, which is ideal for performing measurements at a given listening position, like the driver's headspace in an automobile. You supply an appropriate tripod or microphone stand, and you're ready to make multi-mic measurements. The core measurement technology in Max and Tune is called FFT, which stands for Fast Fourier Transform. FFT is an advanced form of audio measurement that digitally samples the audio and breaks the complex audio signal down to individual frequency components for analysis. A single FFT measurement is used to produce Tune4's RTA and spectrograph data, and in these modes, the Max hardware interface performs multiplexing of the five microphones, providing an average response to one channel for analysis. The benefit of this multi-mic approach is an RTA response that is much more trustworthy for adjusting frequency response. Max also enables Tune 4 to conduct more complex dual FFT measurements called transfer functions. By comparing the measured signal to a reference signal, a transfer function captures the three dimensions of audio, frequency, level, and time, together. This 3D data can be analyzed from different 2D perspectives on screen to better understand how the audio is behaving. Impulse response tracks the time it takes for the measured signal to reproduce the reference source signal. Magnitude shows us frequency response relative to the reference signal, much like an RTA display, but with better noise immunity. Phase shows us a wrapped view of the measured phase response relative to the reference signal, with frequency on the horizontal axis and phase angle on the vertical axis. A coherence display can be overlaid onto any of these measurements to show whether noise is intruding on our measurement accuracy. Max and Tune 4 can average up to five dual FFT transfer functions simultaneously and can run up to six transfer functions independently. All of this is viewable in real time as the system is playing, so there's no need to capture and save, adjust, recapture and save, adjust, etc. You will see the effect of your DSP adjustments immediately, allowing you to easily dial in delays and all pass filters. You can also stack two views, like magnitude and phase, for example, so you can clearly see the effect of your adjustments. It is awesome to see it all happen right in front of you. Captured transfer function data can be saved to your computer for later viewing or for comparison with a live measurement. Each transfer function capture contains all the data at full resolution and can be viewed as a phase wrap, linear or log impulse response, or as a magnitude plot of frequency response. We have taken care to set up all these features with default settings that are ideal for their most common applications, so you can make useful transfer function measurements from day one. We know that's a lot to digest, but let's just say that Max and Tune 4 form a very complete, very capable, professional-grade audio measurement system that can be used to tune any DSP from any manufacturer and can perform all kinds of useful audio measurements in any application car, marine, power sports, pro, home audio, you name it. So let's take a deep breath because there's still a bit more to discover. We already discussed how Tune 4 has a nifty AutoSet EQ micro automation that automatically configures your VXI, MVI parametric EQs to match your target curves. You can even decide how many bands of EQ you want to set automatically in case you want to save one or two for later tweaking. If you prefer to control the EQ manually, you can certainly do that. With your target for that channel on screen, you can call up the EQ overlay and your measured data and make any adjustments you want. Having an all-on-one screen makes it so nice. Also remember that after using the micro-automation, you're still free to make additional changes to the EQs. With Max connected, we now have another great micro-automation to help set delays in a flash. Using the impulse response measurements with Max Tune is the most accurate way to measure delays because it directly measures the delay. We don't rely on physical distance to approximate the delay. We can consider everything that contributes to it and give you a reliable measurement in seconds. The aptly named True Delay feature automatically calculates accurate initial delay values for each amplifier channel from your impulse response measurements. You then set the longest delay as the reference. With MVI and VXI, a quick click on the Insert Delta button inputs the correct delay for each of the remaining channels, saving you tons of time and avoiding entry errors. If you're using a different DSP, you can just read the calculated values from Tune and transfer them to your DSP software manually. It's really pretty darn cool. 
So now that you have a good overview of the amazing capabilities of the MAX audio measurement system, what we would like to do next is give you an idea of the process you would use to tune an audio system with MAX and Tune 4. Remember, even though we're using a car as an example here, this general procedure is similar for a wide range of audio systems. So we're going to turn it back over to Steve for that demo. Thanks, Manville. Okay, so the example we have for you today is a new demo car. It's a Cadillac XT4, which is a compact SUV. The system includes VXI amplifiers feeding a pair of 10W7 subwoofers and a full C7 three-way active system in the front. We're going to create a driver's seat focused tune, so we'll place our 5 mic array in the driver's seat at about the location where the listener's head will be. In the interest of time, we'll accelerate the pace for this presentation, but you can expect this whole procedure to take about an hour from start to finish. And we promise, in the future we'll offer trainings that breaks down all of this and explains the process in more detail. So let's continue with our accelerated demo. After you've confirmed that your signal routing in the vehicle and in your software is correct, check to make sure that everything else is set to zero or off. Maybe engage a high pass filter at around 1000 Hz on your tweeters just to be safe. There's really no need to play the system at an extremely high level. About 75 to 85 dB SPL from each of the main speakers is usually fine. The goal is to be well above the noise floor. We're going to start by setting our initial delay values, which involves looking at the impulse response graph for each output channel. By zooming into the beginning of the impulse response, you can easily see the speaker's polarity. If it goes up, it's positive. If it goes down, you guessed it, then it's negative. If the initial impulses all go the same direction for all channels, you're in a good place to start. We can now move on to setting delays. We are looking for the longest delay among all of our outputs, which is usually the speaker that's furthest away from the microphones. But we're not going to need a tape measure. Here's a more efficient way of finding the longest delay in your system, one that also allows you to find and correct any polarity differences at the same time. First, you measure the impulse response of one channel, any channel, and set it as your reference delay. It may not be the right one, but it's fine for now. Then measure the next channel. If the signal's arriving earlier, ignore it and just check the polarity or the direction of the signal. If it's arriving later, then set that channel as the new reference. Keep doing this for all of the output channels. Once you get to the last channel, you will have found the longest value, set it as the reference, and confirm that all impulses are going in the same initial direction for proper polarity. It's fast and easy. Now that our reference delay is set, all the other channels are either arriving at the same time or earlier. We'll want to delay all the early ones to arrive at the same time as the reference. We do this by finding and inserting an offset delay, or a delta delay. And since we're using VXI amplifiers here, we'll use the true delay finder and then click insert delta. Repeat that for each channel. And just like that, we're done. All channels are now precisely aligned in time. So what's next? We now turn to the RTA graph, and we call up our target curves. You'll want to position the target curves to be slightly below the measured data for each band. And here's a pro tip. When doing a four-way system, first look at the level of the mid-bass driver on the far side of the vehicle. It'll usually require the most level on the output of the DSP, and therefore can establish the overall level for the whole system. You can save time by using the level of that driver to set the levels for the entire system correctly the first time. With that done, we recommend that you start tuning with the tweeters. Starting with the left tweeter, we adjust the level and high pass filter until the measured responses line up closely with the target response. In this case, our target is a 24 dB per octave linkage Riley filter at 5000 Hz. We can usually expect our measured data to be very close to that. When tuning to a target curve, we're trying to make the measured acoustical response match the target response. This may require a different crossover filter type frequency, and slope when compared to the one that was used to create the target response. As long as the high-pass filters you end up using are still appropriate for the speakers you're using, you should be fine. With the high-pass and level set as close to the target as we can get, we can now use our parametric EQ to make the rest of the measured data match the target. We could do this manually, one band at a time, or, since we're using a VXI amplifier, we can use the Auto Set EQ to target feature. As you can see, the Auto Set EQ runs very quickly and gives accurate results. Isn't technology wonderful? If we're happy with the results, we move on to the next channel and repeat the process. 
If we feel we can make some adjustments that make it even closer, we can do that as well. Once we've matched all the outputs to their targets, we're ready to start looking at how the channels will interact. Here's where the transfer function measurements really shine. Switch the graphs now to show phase in one and RTA in the other. We're going to look at the phase of our mid-base drivers, first one at a time, then we'll make them into a group. Bring up the left mid-base driver and make sure your phase graph is selected. Let the data settle in. Tapping the V key can speed that up for you. Now capture the data. Then switch over to the right mid-base driver. With the captured data still visible from the left channel, we can see, now see any differences in time between left and right. We need to make sure that these are lined up well if we want solid upfront base and really good imaging when we get in the car and listen. If we look in this area, we can see the right channel has a slightly different phase response compared to the left channel. These differences will impact the way the two drivers will interact when they're played together. Ideally, we want the responses to be equal in all three dimensions, level, frequency, and time, because when we play them together, we want the summation of the signals to be as close to perfect as possible. You can use your cursor to identify where the phase data is different. It looks like they seem to split right around 145 hertz. Since we already know that their frequency response and levels are very close, we need a DSP tool that will keep both of those unchanged, but can allow us to adjust only the phase. That's what an all-pass filter can do for us. Since the left channel seems to have an additional wrap, we'll engage an all-pass filter on the right channel to create a similar wrap there. The DSP and the VXI amplifiers, and the MVI amplifiers too, allow us to change the Q or the shape of an all-pass filter. As we adjust the Q, we can watch the change in phase get closer and closer and closer to the other channel. Get as close as you can and play both channels together and observe the combined output on the RTA graph. You will see a very solid combined response. There should not be any reduction in output when you play them together. And you can test this by toggling the all-pass filter on and off to see how the summation changes. Now that we've aligned both mid-bass speakers to one another, play them both and capture the time and RTA data for the combined pair. What we'll do now is we'll look at this data for this mid-bass group and compare it to the data for the subwoofers. You can always hide or delete individual capture traces to keep your graphs nice and clean. Keep in mind that capture traces are saved as files and they can be reloaded later if you want. That's why it's a really good idea to name them so you can remember what they were. So now we turn on the subwoofers. And again, we'll look at the RTA and phase data. We're mostly focused on the transition region where the low pass filter on the sub passes over to the high pass filter on the mid-base drivers. If we keep the combined mid-base phase and RTA data visible, we can quickly see whether or not the phase for the sub aligns with the mid-base. If we see anything in the phase alignment that seems off, we'll need a DSP tool that will not interfere with the level or the frequency response of the drivers. Those have already been set. We only want to alter the time domain, and that leaves us with three tools, polarity, all pass, and delay. Yes, delay. One of the first steps was to set the initial delay values, but that was to align the impulse responses and make it so that the phase data was all based on a common point, in this case, zero. But if it looks like we can match up the phase better by looking at the relative phase data, it's perfectly acceptable to do that now. And you can always try it and put it back if it doesn't help. That's one of the benefits of having real-time measurements. In this case, it looks like we're in pretty good shape and everything's lining up nicely. Technically, you can continue this process of aligning left channel to right channel all the way up the frequency range, but the benefits of phase alignment diminishes as you go higher in frequency. And it's usually okay to skip the phase analysis above 1.5 to 2000 Hz. With our system aligned properly, it's time to look at the frequency response and compare left versus right against our target sum. We can make some adjustments to each driver or side, and when we feel we are where we want to be, we stop. At this point, we're done with the analytical part of the tuning process. Pretty much everything we do from here on out should be done with your butt in the listener's position and your laptop on your lap. Listen to a variety of good music that you're familiar with and start seasoning to taste. Adjusting tweeter levels is a good place to start. Tweaking left and right levels for mids and tweeters by fractions of a dB can really help dial in the imaging. Any changes you make to the EQ and level are likely to be very minor. And your time measurements are very well established at this point, so you really shouldn't have to mess with them. Once you're happy with the sound of the system, place the mics back in the car and capture level and frequency data. This data can be helpful as you tune more systems and can be a good reference for creating your own target curves. 
Make sure you save your project file to your computer and transfer it to your amplifiers too. That's pretty much it. We've just done a comprehensive tune that considers all three dimensions of audio. We have precisely aligned the speakers in time and phase. We've ensured that they interact well, and we made sure that the system has a smooth frequency response modeled to our target curve. You can expect this system to have very strong imaging, solid mid-bass, and the bass will sound like it's coming from the front of the vehicle. Not bad at all. Some people describe the results as magical, but in reality, it's just a result of making proper adjustments based on complete and accurate measurement data. Now we realize that this demo was very quick and there are many details to fill in and explain. We'll be offering a whole series of Max and Tune training sessions to help you get more familiar with the processes that we've outlined here today. I would like to wrap up today's presentation with some final thoughts. I hope you can see that Max and Tune 4 bring forward a new standard for performing professional quality audio measurements in a wide range of environments. Max measurements in particular are objective, interrelated, and present a whole picture of the audio system's performance, one that incorporates all three pillars of audio, frequency, level, and time, and it guides us towards the right decisions without guesswork, shortcuts, or rules of thumb. An investment in Max will result in an outstanding value by streamlining the DSP workflows and empowering audio professionals to achieve great audio results. Lastly, we need to acknowledge the JL Audio engineering and product development team behind this project. All of the people you see here on screen have contributed to this project, but Nicholas Ames deserves a special level of recognition. From beginning to end, his vision, enthusiasm, and effort were instrumental to the entire Max and Tune 4 project. We look forward to hearing about all the great audio results you'll achieve with Max and Tune 4. Thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.